Big news in modern, guess which cards got on banned? It's preordain. So let's dive in. Preordain. What is it? Scry two, then draw a card. Is this good enough to revive infect? I think it is. Let me just dive into why I think this is important. Um We've been watching selection for quite a while now. I've literally tried every single um, cantrip that's legal in modern, uh, but they just always fell a bit short. Like opt was only draw one, wasn't good enough. Serum visions, having to draw the card first, just was pretty bad. I've tried the Elven Farsight for a while, which is scribe three, very good. But the fact that you only draw a card when it's a creature was quite medium. And I think this is the card that we actually needed to update Infect. Because we are very often looking for very specific cards and this helps us to find what we need. I have adapted the list very, very heavily and I'm not gonna lie, my win rates have been increasing a ton after brewing a land a lot. This is quite a different deck. Um, let me start by saying that you should not be playing black green anymore. I am full on back on blue green and this is the reason why. It feels like a legacy deck sometimes. Um, and let's dive into the deck, shall we? So first of all, pre day. Four of, easily, we just find what we need. If you look at the list, by the way, you can see that I adapted my previous blue-green build where I was still playing the ensnaring bridges. Those are gone. I'm also no longer playing the Shaper Sanctuaries. That was an easy trade. You swap Shaper Sanctuaries for Preordains because that's also a draw spell and finds you what you need instead of just drawing. And I've also cut the spell skies. You can see the uh, creature suite that I no longer have those. You don't need them. They are still fine if you want to play them. Go ahead. But I decided to go for a different route. Full Force Negation. That's something that we've never seen in Infect, but this has been surprisingly good for me. And let's dive into why, right? So imagine if you play turn one Glistener Elf and turn two, uh, sorry, turn one on the opponent's side. What they usually do is they just use a removal spell on your elf, right? Because it always works. Not anymore. I've won quite a lot of games where I go turn one elf, my opponent uses, I don't know, Fatal Push. I force a negation, my turn, scale up, might, boom, win the game. Easy. And it, it happens. Just you, you think, yeah, that's like the perfect, but I mean, you don't have to kill them immediately, right? If you can just scale up once and deal them six infect damage and you drop down venerate rock piece a turn afterwards, it's going to be pretty damn difficult for your opponent to catch up. Now, why have I never played Force Negation in the past? Because I really like the card. Reason is that if you want to play Force Negation, you need a high enough blue count to actually make this work, right? And I've never found the correct spells that um, were worth to play in Infect, but I think now we did find them. Of course, we already have four Blood Agents, those are blue, so that adds up to eight. Now with Preordain, that's four spells that are definitely worth it, that's already 12 blue spells, but I think if you want to play a Force effect, you need at least 16, preferably 17 or 18, that's what I play in Legacy as well. I never have issues with that, usually you only need to Force once, and um, well, it's only three mana, so you can definitely cast this too. Um, so what I also did is I'm trying out subtleties in the deck right now, and they have also been surprisingly good, because very often what your opponent also wants to do is um, just, like, if you play turn one elf, they play, I don't know, Ragavan, and if you have lethal in hand, you can then just subtlety the Ragavan and kill them. Nice. Subtlety, really good, especially with the scam not getting a ban. Um, being able to subtlety a turn one grief or fury is very good. Um, very often just annihilates their game plan, and I can tell you one thing, they will not be playing around subtlety uh, from in the infect side. Same goes for Force Negation, by the way. I've stolen a lot of games because my opponents were not playing around Force Negation, as they shouldn't, by the way. Now, that only adds up to um, not enough blue spells, so what I've also been playing is Slip Out the Back. Surprisingly good, really. I've been wanting to test this card for a while now, but again, I think, no, it hasn't ever been worth it, but now it is. And let's talk about this. So what Slip Out the Back does is it gives your creature a plus one, plus one counter, quite relevant, but it also phases out the creature. And this is an effect we don't have in other cards because the creature no longer exists, which means it also works like against um, engineered explosives because they destroy everything. You can just phase out the creature and it doesn't exist, so it doesn't get removed. Um, if they want to bounce your stuff, um, step out of the back works, but I guess that's true for snakeskin as well. But any mass removal spell um, that works or like sacrifice effect for that matter, which is what we will see in the league that's coming up, very relevant. What I've absolutely been loving about this card is what I've been doing very often is just turn one do nothing turn two my uh, or turn one on my opponent's side they don't know they can trip stuff like that 
So what usually happens is your opponents in their next turn will have two mana to try and kill your creature twice. So what I've often done is just play Glistener Elf turn two and then immediately slip out the back when my opponent's out tapped. And that means the Glistener Elf will only return on my turn when I have my mana up to protect my threat. Very relevant and in the league we will see that this comes up quite a lot. Don't even get me started on how good it works with together with Venerated Rock Beast, that's insane. Okay, so quite a different list. Again, feels like a legacy deck sometimes. Sideboarding, um, pretty straightforward in the beginning. Two Fluster Storms, two Spell Pairs, because they have like different, they, uh, different situations where they are good. This list completely destroys combo decks. Uh, honestly, I've played against Rhinos like five or six times now. And I think I want all of them, not even close. Um, four Force Negation, two Fluster Storm, two Spell Pierce. On top of playing subtleties, yikes. Um, Stern Scolding, surprisingly well. Like, if you're on the play against Scam and they want to turn one Grief, you can just counter this. It's been working out fine. And then Force of Vigor, that's pretty straightforward. We've been playing that uh, in the past. No longer playing four, you don't need that. And then one, this, this is a surprise. People will not be playing around Choke from your side. Well, they shouldn't because you're playing blue-green, but if you look at the mana base, four botanical sanctums, two forests, four fetches, Pendlehaven, two groves, the only islands I'm playing is double breeding pool. If you play choke and, like, you have to tap one breeding pool to do that, that's fine, honestly. You don't really care. Uh, you have other ways to get your mana, you also play nobles, and the blowout that you will get from trying to annihilate your opponents with the chokes is just worth it. Then I'm playing two Glistener Elf. Um, an Uprising of Tron makes Glistener Elf better, like uh, Rhinos is also uh, everywhere, so Glistener Elf is very good against those. So I really want them in very specific matchups. Uh, in the main, I'm only playing two because it's mm, it's like the worst creature in the list right now. Fair to straightforward. And to finish this up, I'm playing Wilts. And Wilts makes it so you can actually cycle it if you don't want Wilt. What I do really like is that uh, against Blood Moon decks, I really hate bringing in Force of Vigors um, because sometimes just a dead card doesn't do anything if they don't have the Blood Moon. So I really like Wilts because you can draw a card if you don't need it. That's the list. Let's see what we uh, ended up with playing in uh, our league because we had a lot of fun. I do want to thank Card Hoarder again for sponsoring this video. They ensure that I can uh, do brews like this. So thank you very much and let's dive in. I don't think I told you this when I was uh, discussing the deck, but I'm playing one Become a Mess again. Reason, reason for this is quite easy. We are playing um, Preordained, so we are playing more cantrips, so I believe that we will be able to fill the graveyard much more quickly. So one Become a Mess, I'm quite happy with that. Otherwise, this list is fine. I have Nobles, I have Nexus, so I have Threats, so I have all the stuff that I want. So I'm just going to keep, start with the Sanctum, and slam down the Noble. We are playing against Burn, so really nice matchup to start with. It's a difficult matchup. It has always been difficult for Infect because they just play, well, pretty much every single removal spell that you can think of. So I'm quite happy to be able to start out against uh, Burn to just see how well my list will perform. Now they just Searing Blaze, getting rid of Noble. I, I think that's correct. I'm going to keep Might of the Crows here. And the reason for that is that I really want to um, be able to go all in in a certain turn. Uh, because I expect that I will have to Might, they will Bolt, and then in response I want to become uh, Immense my creature. That's how I expect this game to go. Okay, so they do get rid of two Nobles, as they should. I think that's correct. Running Vortex, um, I mean, they're tapping out, um, so that's good for us. That means I can just play the way I want to. I'm going to Animate, I'm going to Scale up here, and then Might, and kill them. Me drawing the scale up was good, but them tapping out for Roiling Vortex makes it um, so that I can just uh, would have gone for it anyway. If they hadn't played the Vortex, I probably still would have gone for it because they only then they would have had three cards in hand. And if I scale up, they have to bolt. I might they have to bolt again, and they've already used bolt and steering blaze. So I mean, the, against burn, you sometimes have to take those odds. You can't wait for too long because you might as well just die at any soon at any point. So yeah, okay, quick game one here. Let's go to game two. Let's discuss sideboarding first. Not a lot of changes. I think I was fairly happy with my list. I've cut one scale up, one slip out the back, and I just played two fluster storms. That's straightforward. You want to um, try and stop the most removal um, spells. And this is why I like the preordains, right? Just look at this hand. Normally, in usually, in fact, this would be unplayable. However, preordain makes it that you will find the spells that you need. You actually get to see three cards. That's not including the card I'm going to draw for the turn. So I'm going to see four cards, potentially. There will be a threat in there. If there isn't, I mean, 
sure, sometimes you get unlucky, but I think this is a hand that you want to keep. That's, that's like my comparison to Legacy adds up again, because that's what you usually want to do in Legacy. Okay, so you can see that I really wanted to have the Rock Priest, so I put it on top. You're going to draw it, and then our opponent's going to try and kill us ASAP. Um, I didn't really know what was happening here. If I remember correctly, Sanctifier is a sideboard card, so they give it protection from black and red. I think here is um, that usually in effect right now is Sultai. Um, so my opponent was trying to uh, make it that my potential fatal pushes wouldn't work. But, I mean, I'm playing blue-green, but they clearly don't realize that. Anyway, I'm playing the Rot Priest. Very good. So they are going to probably just try and kill it, which they do. So I'm going to save the Rot Priest. And here at this point, if they want to bolt my Rot Priest again, that's fine. I'll take that. There we go. So they kill the rock priest. And this is why I actually used the Might of Eldacrosa. You could think that why wouldn't you use the vines, right? But I wanted them to kill rock priests if they can, because I knew that I still had Nexus in my hand, Noble, and um, I'm at a healthy life point at this uh, at this situation. So I'm just going to I'm just going to um, preordain. I really like the Fluster Storm, so I want to draw that one. And I know that I'm setting up for next turn, right? So they Serum Blaze, my Noble. I don't care. Rock Priest has already done its part. So here you can see, this is all thanks to Preordain. Perfect setting up, right? Maybe this went a bit too fast, so I'm going to go over again what happened. I already had them at three, in fact. Um, so I knew that I only needed one um, Thumb Spell to kill them. The Preordain saw Scale Up and Fluster Storm. I, let, um, I left both on top. Drawing a Fluster Storm first, because I was expecting them to really want to kill the Noble, but I also knew that I had Penal Haven, right? So I was expecting them to kill the um, the Noble. There we go. They killed it. Then I just animate Nexus. Penal Haven first, making it a 2-3, and then I'm going to scale up, making it a 7, and just kill them. I really love this game, and I was very happy to show you, because all the cards that we played worked out perfectly, right? Rock Priest, very good. It made it so you only need one pump spell. Did its job. Also took, like, how many removal spells? I think it baited out, like, three. No, Rock Priest took two, and then Noble took the other one. And then we can finish the job off with Ink Moth Nexus. I, the, pre the two preordains I played made it so I could I could map out the game perfectly. The first preordain, I just kept what I wanted, put one on the bottom. The second preordain made it so I could stack the cards in the exact perfect combination that I wanted to. Preordain won us the game here. Nice. Cool. Next round. This game, I'm on the draw. Again, look at this hand. Lovely. Fourth negation here. Really good, because we have some blue cards to go alongside it. Preordain. So when I have to think, I really want to preordain to find the stuff that I need. However, I think I'd rather have Blighted Agent, uh, because that's the win condition. So depending on how the game goes, I will, might have to um, pitch preordain to this fourth negation. So let's just see what happens, right? So they just play a land, my turn. I draw a land that I need. Excellent. So now that I've drawn the land, I think what I want to do is I want to play this Rot Priest. Main reason is quite easy. Um, since I already I have the land that I need, I can now next turn either play the Agent uh, and have Force Negation backup, or I could play the Noble and try and protect it, depending on what I'm up against and how the game develops. So starting off with Rot Priest, always nice, especially with Ketria Triome. I'm like, okay, if they vote for Ren and Six right now, that would be perfect. However, we are playing against Rhinos, it seems. I'm not 100% sure, but um, I think that I just need to play it like this. So I didn't want to just play Agent and then just um, walk into a potential um, flurry of removal spells. I think I want to play it safe. Uh, if it is Rhinos, usually if you set up your game correctly, you can win out of, uh, out of nowhere. Um, so... I also have Pendle Haven, so the ideal setup for me is next turn, play Blood Agent with Noble and Breeding Pool, and then I can protect my Blood Agent with Pendle Haven for free, because they play like a lot of um, two damage spells, so that's what I was working towards. Surprise, surprise, they have the Rhino, and you can see that I could have fourth negationed the, um, the uh, Cascade spell, but I decide not to do that, and that's because I analyzed that I'm going to win next turn. I have Scale Up, Might, and Vines. So what I want to do is I want to be able to untap. So I kept Force Negation. Can you see how much this feels like a Legacy deck? Because it certainly feels to me like the case. So my opponent doesn't do anything here. And what they were going to do is, this is a bit weird. So in my upkeep, they are actually going to use Dead on Blighted Agents. 
Now, I can just Pendlehaven response, so maybe they forgot about the Pendlehaven. I mean, it happens all the time, so... But that means I can just safely go for it. I can scale up. There we go. They force negation to scale up. That's fine. So I'm going to scale up again. And they lose. Again, the combination here of Blood Agent and Venerated Drop Priest makes it that you win the game. Um, I've I've seen from time to time that people think that War Priest is not worth it in effect, which is so weird to me because we've seen now both games that I just stole the game because of it. Very often, if you're just able to pump in once with your infect threats that's good enough when you have rock priest because this adds up it adds up it's like a semi lightning bolt for our deck okay cool let's go to game two another way to show you just how good our deck is working right now i have preordain and force negation both cards i really really want to have i've been finding that um, rhinos against us specifically has to just mulligan until to have they have a fast combo which is correct don't get me wrong Drawing the force negation here is excellent. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to preordain because ideally what I can do next turn is I can just play the um, Inkmon Nexus here and pass. So this is a perfect situation for me. Why? Well, I now have double force negation and I can cast one of them and then I can pitch agent or preordain to the other one. I already have Nexus and I have another Nexus left. So I no longer need this bladder agent. Perfect. Everything is working out exactly the way I want it to. Let's see if they have... The cascade spell here which they do not and here i draw another force negation so that's a bit too much but i i'm thinking for a while now here so what can i do i can uh play the nexus slam in for two or um if i do that uh, that means i know i don't have the option to play force negation because keep in mind force negation says you can only cast it for free if it's not your turn so what i want to do is i want to bait out and see what they have because i imagine that if they do have the rhino uh, cascade spell that um, they will play it right now here with violent outburst which they do so here we see crushing footfalls i'm just going to counter this right now if they force negation back so be it that means they only have one card left in hand they don't they are going to dead my noble which is okay for me and now they play the blood moon usually that's game but not right now since i have my force negation so force negation takes makes it so that i not lose on the spot here what we did is we animated Nexus, and then I'm just going to Mightful Crosser, slam in for 5. Since I still have Vines left, I know that I need to draw land and then win the game immediately. Can't wait for too long, so here I'm just going to slam in. Now, with my opponent having two cards left in hand, I'm currently not under any pressure, because I know with the Force Negation, it's just so good, because very often in the past, what you would have needed to do here is you just needed to commit. You can't wait for too long, but... Force of Negation really makes it that we can play like a control deck. Again, playing a legacy game plan, uh, which feels extremely powerful. So I'm not even I'm not even bothered with this Blooded Agent. I don't care. Pendlehaven here, excellent draw. I'm just going to animate both of these. Slam in. And the reason why I'm not using Pendlehaven is that if they play like dead, I want to be able to use the Pendlehaven. So I'm not even going to use it. I don't need to. It's not going to change the clock. And this means that I can just next turn, slam in, Pendlehaven, if I need to, the one that they... Uh, if they have a removal spell, then I'll leave in the other one. Or Vines if I want to. That's probably the safer play. Nice. Let's go to round three. Look at this beautiful opening hand again. I'm, I'm so happy with this league. Uh, because the new cards that I'm playing out right now were, well, excellent. So double force negation is excellent. I also have Agent and Slip out the back. So if I'm playing against a fast combo deck, I will be able to uh, stop them from winning twice. He would see a rough mulligan here, a mulligan to 5, so I was expecting either Tron or a very fast aggro deck, and it was the second one. I mean, Aether Vial, I wasn't sure what I was up against, but you just always counter the Aether Vial, because that's the way that they cheat the game. Um, and apparently, you are playing against Goblins. It's been a long while since I've played against Goblins, so um, it's a scary matchup. It is, because they actually have a lot of removal spells. Now, I just need to draw... Another pump spell. I draw vines, not the best one, but I mean, it's it's now two turns that I need. So the big on what they find with Snoop, that could be dangerous for me, but it has some sickness one. So I'm feeling fairly, fairly well uh, adapted to deal with this. And here we just saw the scale up, so I kill them. Against other creature matchups, it's a straight up race and it can be, um, it can be interesting. So let's go to game two. The sideboarding, not a lot of changes. I cut both negations because the only thing that you can counter with this is um, the Aether Vials. Um, so not worth it. So I brought in Force Vigors instead. 
Uh, I think that's uh, it's still not great, but it's better than Force Negations because if it does resolve, uh, I can then get rid of it later, which is not true for Force Negation, and this will be a very, very awkward draw indeed later. And Stern Scoldings, those are good because you can counter the creatures if they don't have Cavern of Souls, of course. Okay, so let's dive in, shall we? So, opening hand here is okay. Um, the thing is, and this is another nice way that I can show you just how powerful Preordain is, normally it's really malleable. You need two lands, otherwise it doesn't do anything. However, with Preordain, we will find the land that we need, which is excellent. Our opponent takes a very rough mulligan, four cards, but uh, it's still going to be an interesting game, let me tell you that. So, I just fetch. I, of course, will use Preordain. And the only thing I want to see here is a land. So I put the pump spell on the bottom, and I find a forest. So now the thing is, I really want to um, draw another land, and then I think it's just a an easy, an easy win, because that means I can wait a turn, play the agent, and then just uh, chill. However, right now, I think, and I, I need to commit, I can't wait and do nothing, so I have to play this agent, uh, whether I like it, like it or not. Um, they only have, well, like two cards in hand that I don't know about, so if they don't have removal spell, that's just fine. They play Snoop, they play Ignoble, and they have Munitions Expert. So Mulligan to 4, that was a pretty good hand. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, that kind of sucks. If I would have drawn a land, I would have waited. However, we do draw Nexus, so I'm like, okay, that's cool. Then we can just win next turn. They play Tarfire on the Rod Priest right, to save it. But now they just draw the combo and win. So that was a pretty damn good Mulligan. Let me just show you how the combo works, right? So they get um, the Bogart Harbringer. What happens is they will get... The Kiki Jiki, and now they will just have infinite um, infinite goblins. And then what they're going to do is they're going to just copy the Bogart Harbinger again, and then they will be able to sacrifice all the goblins to just kill me straight away. Let me just show you. Okay, so they have um, they've made infinite goblins. They have copied this one, the Bogart Harbinger, which means they can put a goblin on top. What they did is they put Sling Gang Lieutenant on top, and that says Sack a Goblin. Target player loses one life and you gain one life. Now, it's on top, but Snoop says that this card actually has the ability of that goblin. So they can just sacrifice everything and win the game that way. Game three. But this opening hand is fine. I have Ink Moth. I have some Thumb Spells. Um, so I'm going to keep. Not terribly exciting, but I'm going to keep. Uh, my opponent has the Mulligan to four again. Rough Mulligans. But in all honesty, I think... Um, if you're a Goblins player, they just need removal. If they don't have removal, I'm just going to trample over them. This is a straight up race, and generally Infect likes likes racing, especially against decks that do not play as much removal spells. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to have to try and go for it as soon as possible, especially with them not doing anything. So I'm just here, just going to slam it with Ink Moth Nexus. Now, if I might have Ultra here, I walk straight into a removal spell and I could still lose. So what I want to do is I want to see whether or not they have removal spells, because if they have one, they would use it now. So I bait out a removal spell. Excellent. And now they have two removal spells, so that's that's pretty disgusting. But I figure that this is okay. I mean, they've they've probably used all their gas right now, which is what they have to do. And now I can commit. So as I said, what they want to do is they want to mulligan to removal spells to try and stabilize the game. So they have a Bogart Harbinger, they tap out, they reveal Goblin Trash Master, and now I'm like, this is going to be an interesting game. Because Trash Master says that you can sacrifice a goblin to destroy target artifact. I only have Ink Moth Nexus, which is an artifact, and I'm not going to be able to win right now. So, yikes. I can still lose this one. They played it very well. Okay, I'm going to try and do my best. Um, so, slam in 5 Infect, and now we will have interesting turns. I think, I really, I know that I need to play this perfectly if I want to steal this game, right? I have 1 Vines. If I draw 1 Protection Spell, I can try and squeeze out a win here. So, they have the Trash Master. Currently, four goblins, so you can they can try and destroy Ink Moth Nexus twice. I know that I need to draw a protection spell, otherwise I'm not going to be able to win. So I just cycle, well not cycle, but I'm going to draw a card with Grove, I draw Vines and Noble. Okay, we're still very far away from winning, but I mean, I'm going to try and do my best. I really need to be able to uh, try and win this game by stealing it. So I have Noble. My guess is that they would just want to attack with everything to try and kill me as soon as possible, which is what they do. Okay, and here I'm thinking for a while. I block the Munitions Expert, and now I'm going to Might Noble. Two, three. I just want to get rid of as much Goblins as soon as I can to try and steal the, way, uh, the game that way. I know that if I attack right now, 
So attack with Nexus, they remove it. Vines, they remove it. Vines, they remove it again. Boom, I've lost the game. So I really need to try and pick my spot. If they attack with everything here, I actually lose. Um, if they play it correctly. However, I know that this is very risky for them. I've done nothing, so they... It's unlikely that they go for that route, but just to show you that this was a very interesting game. Okay, so here they're going to attack with one uh, Bogart Harbinger here. I need to block this or get rid of it in some capacity, otherwise I just lose. So I'm going to block with Noble. Now, I need Vines. I'm not going to be able to do anything else but Vines. So this is what I was hoping for, which is the best play on their end. Let me start by saying that. So I just block. I'm going to become immense. Kill another Goblin. And now what I need to happen is that they want to destroy the Nexus as soon as possible. So I'm going to slam it with Nexus. And now this is a good spot because if they want to try and kill the Nexus here, so they're going to shoot a Goblin, try and kill it, I'm going to Vines. If they do it again, I can Vines again. So that was fine by me, fine exchange. Now, they are a good player, so of course they know what they are doing. They are not going to do that. So now I have the uh, decision to make do for whether or not I want to play this up or not. I decide to do that. Why? Because if they want to sack a goblin to kill Nexus, I can find, and they have to sack the Trash Master to do it again. Right? So that means I would be left with Glistener Elf. That would be a fine exchange by me. Okay, so. Here they play a mountain. They didn't play a goblin last turn, so I just know that they don't have a goblin. So that's very good for me. They're going to attack with a goblin. I block with Elf. I survive another turn. And now, I mean, they have to. I, I'm going to slam it for two, so they have to try and kill it now. They sack a goblin. I vines. They sack the goblin again. I vines. And I win the game. Wow. That was... I mean, that was such a good game. I had a lot of fun here. And this was so many decisions to be made. Uh, and uh, yeah, loved it. It's been a long while since I've played such a fun game. All right, cool. Let's go to round four. Good opening hand here. I have Rock Priest, Noble, Agent. I also have Subtlety, depending on what my opponent's going to be doing. So we shall see. Play Sanctum. I'm going to start with Noble here. Really want to just play Agent turn 2 and be able to Snake Skin. If not, I still have the Rock Priest. Okay, so far so good. Just going to play the Rock Priest. Also going to play the Noble. If they want to kill Rock Priest, that's fine. If they kill Noble, that's fine too. Then I have Rock Priest, so I'm okay with whatever happens here. Drawing Penal Haven is nice. So now I'm going to use Bladder Agents. Definitely keep up the Penal Haven because that means you can protect it from Bowmasters. However, they have Counter Spell. That's unfortunate. So against Blue, Blue Black Control, the only card you really care about is the One Ring. If they don't have that one, it's usually a fairly uh, fine matchup. Especially when you have Rob Priests. So Subtlety is really nice because now I can start um, hardcasting the Subtleties. I'm just going to slam in here. Deal some regular damage. Also, people do not respect their life totals against Infect, so subtlety becomes a lot better. There we go. There's the big boy himself. The one ring. Um, I accidentally clicked through the turn here, which is my bad. I should have definitely flashed in subtlety there. Um, that was my mistake. But okay, it happened. Nothing I can do about it anymore. Here they play Lorian. I'm okay with that. In response, I'm going to subtlety. Let's not make the mistake I did last time, because now I would have had two subtleties, right? And that would have just been really good. Anyway, let's just scale up, see what they do. They force negation. Okay, that's fine. So I'm just going to try and kill them as soon as possible. I'm going to target the Ross Priests. They have another force negation. Okay, that sucks, but so be it. I'm going to keep open this last mana. Force next skin veil. And they will die to this one ring eventually. I mean, I have a lot of... Uh, of cards left. I'm just going to slam it with subtlety. They bow masters. Don't care about that one. They target it, and they this this is excellent. Look at this. They subtlety, and I subtlety their subtlety for the win. <laughs> nice. Uh, it's so lovely that I'm able to show you why these cards are good. Right. Next game. Opening hands pretty good. I have a threat. I have rock priest, and I preordain. So everything I want. Every every time I had an opening have an opening hand with preordain, I'm just happy. I'm just going to start with Preordain, so I have Slip at the back, and then Become Immense below that one. Become Immense, really nice, you know, if they have like Chalice or stuff like that, I can play around it with the Become Immense. At this point, I'm just going to play my Rod Priest, let's see if they counter this. 
So you can see, playing it conservatively, they edict. Okay, let's pause here. This is a situation why I can show you just how good Slip Out the Back is. Normally, Edict would have always worked, even if I had a protection spell, right? Because it makes me sacrifice a non-token creature. However, with Slip Out the Back, the creature does not exist. So what's going to happen here is I'm just going to Slip Out the Back, the Rot Priest. It's gone. So since it doesn't exist, I don't have to sacrifice it. And they also are not able to remove it because it doesn't exist. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, cool. So I can now slam in with the Rot Priest. Now they're going to Bowmasters. I'm thinking for a while, but I mean... If they wanna, if they wanna block, that's fine by me. Uh, I, I've already used my uh, my preordain. I don't have that many draw spells, so I don't really care about the rock priest. That's the only card I care about. The one ring. It makes it so they refuel. That's the only card I was worried about. Unfortunately, didn't find my fourth negation. Didn't find my spell pierces. Uh, oh yeah, sideboarding. I'll show you after this game. Spoilers. I'm gonna go to game three. Okay, so the one ring. Still, I'm feeling okay here, um, as long as I don't cycle, or uh, as long as I don't keep on infinitely playing one rings, I think we should still be able to win this one. Uh, but unfortunately, they, uh, it's going to be a tough tough run here for me. I'm going to slam it with everything. They just take four. Okay, scary. Not happy with that. So here again, Oto War on my Rod Priests. I'm going to find it, which is something that they will in response push. Unfortunate. I was thinking about whether or not I should become a mint, but I'd, uh, I didn't. I didn't really want to do that, uh, especially since on the stack I wasn't even able to because I put two cards in there. And here I have another one ring. Otherwise, I still would have won. I believe just attack with everything, but uh, one ring, dude. I don't know. The card's just so busted. Drawing another land is unfortunate. I really just wanted to draw another rock priest, uh, but okay, so be it. Just take some damage. They have another one ring. So that's ring number three. So, I don't know. It feels to me like everything that could have gone wrong here in this game did go wrong. Now, who knows? Maybe they kill themselves because a lot of counters is on this ring here. 30 cards left in the deck, so the chances of them having another ring are quite slim. Okay, so taking the last of my lands. Noble here is okay. Let's just play it. Not looking good, though, for me. I'm just going to animate both. Let's see what they have. They need two removal spells now. Otherwise, I'm just going to go for it. I have to. Okay. So they have Bowmasters. Excellent. That's kind of what I was hoping for. Because now I can use Might of Elkrosa. But they also have Can't Spell. Now that's okay. Because now they are tapped out. So I can become immense the other one. And I only lose here if they have another Force Negation. Which they do have. So again, everything that could have gone wrong really did go wrong here. Sucks to be me, but nothing I can do about it. Now the Nexus, that's fine. So I'm just going to try and kill them. They have Bowmasters. Okay. I'm just going to attack with the Noble, because they have three counters here on the ring. So maybe, depending on how the game develops, they could die because of the one ring. Okay. It's going to take three. So I'm like, okay, two turns. Let's do this. Let's do this. I'm afraid here of another one ring, that would be unfortunate. Or Sheldred. That's the only thing that I really don't want to see. And there we have Sheldred. Boom. Game. Yikes, tough game here. Uh, too many rings in the beginning, because uh, keep in mind that if they... How many cards did they see? They have seen... They are down to 23 cards, and I'm down to 41. And we still almost won. So, yikes. <laughs> Alright, game three. Let's do sideboarding first. Generally, you don't want as many pump spells, because they just play it a shitload of removal spells, you don't really want them. Certain things really aren't that great against this deck. Um, so what you want is you want more interaction. So of course you keep force negations. You play the spell pierces uh, for when they have the one ring. That's the only card you care about. It really is. The one ring. It makes them so uh, so it makes it so easy for them to just draw so many cards. Vader Summer, also put that one in because it's black based and blue based, so easy sideboarding. Fortunately, we didn't see as many sideboard cards. Um, this has pretty good. Uh, if I draw one blue card here with this Force Negation, I think this is just straight up gas. So I'm just going to keep, you know, I'm going to draw my blue card. I brought in a lot of them, so... Rod Priest, good start. I'm assuming that this will die, which is okay. I want to keep Ink Moth Nexus. It doesn't. Okay, wasn't expecting that. They counter Noble, that's okay. Slam in. Not drawing blue cards and not drawing lands. So, again, pretty much everything that could go wrong here does go wrong, which is unfortunate, but so be it. Nothing I can do about it. They play another land. 
Shield it. I could have sacrificed Ink Moth Nexus, but I really don't want to. That's my only threat. Okay, cool. I have Ink Moth Nexus here, and I'm like, yeah, the only way I have it can... I think it's looking really bad here is if they have the One Ring. And guess what? Of course, they have the Ring. Again, a series of unfortunate events, especially since I haven't drawn a blue card so I could force the negation of the Ring. If I would have been able to force the negation of the Ring... Uh, I mean, that's just game, right? Because I put the counter on here deliberately so I could then use um, a panther to kill them. Um, sucks. It really does. It really does. I think it shows you the power level of force negation. Very often your opponents will just tap out because they don't play around counter magic as they shouldn't. Um, and it would have been nice to get the 5-0 out of that regard. Anyway, let's try our best. So I'm going to become a man's try and... Get rid of this Merc Tide. I'm able to get rid of it. Took me a lot of resources though. And then they Chalice. Don't really care about Chalice all that much, but they have another ring and that's just a nail in the coffin. Yeah. I really needed to draw a blue card there for the Force Negation and then we would have won. Sucks. But let's go to the last round. Just look at this hand. This is another hand that you should mulligan, but not when you have Preordain. I freaking love Preordain, dude. It's so good. Happy with the subtlety? Because now, depending on what I'm up against, I could just annihilate my opponents. Okay. Pyrite Spellbomb. Um, I'm like, I'm not going to counter that one. I was thinking about... Um, uh, sorry. That's not true. I couldn't counter this. I was thinking about subtlety being force negation. That's not true. Anyway. So, preordain. I see a bunch of cards. I really wanted to draw land. So, I am I do want this force negation. So, I draw that one. Put the other one on the bottom. Here they play... Profane Tutor, and I'm like, okay, Profane Tutor, that's fine, because I have Force Negation. So I'm going to play this off. Why? Because I expect that they will kill it with Pirate Spellbomb, and look at this, look at this, perfect, perfect. This is why the deck's so good. My opponent taps out, because Fable of the Mirror Breaker will resolve. Right? Not anymore, not against this build, because that means usually they should get a creature. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to Force Negation, have another Force Negation as backup, and boom, boom, kill you. Told you it feels like a legacy deck. <laughs> okay, next game. I wasn't really sure about what I was up against. I knew that I definitely wanted spell pierces, and I think Bluster Storm should be good as well. And I just cut the Venerate Drop Priest and also brought in um, Glistener Elves, and I cut the subtleties. I hadn't seen a lot of creatures, so I think it's better to play it this way and then just call in on the Infect game plan. So I like it when you can bring in the Elves if you really want them. Okay, cool. Opening hand here, pretty good. Again, Mulligan usually. Oh, ah, this is probably a keep, but I really want to have another land. But I have Preordained, so we are we are well set up to deal with whatever our opponent's going to try and do here. Okay, Thoughtseize for the start. I'm okay with that. They take the Preordain. Just show you the power level of the card. Okay, now. They play two time counters and have Profane Tutor. Okay, I'm like, that's, you're tapping out against Infect, that's risky. Anyway, regardless, I'm just going to slam in. Put into one Infect, I have Vines, and the Force Negation especially is really nice. Fable, nope, Force Negation again, proving its worth, because I'm like, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to prevent you from having a blocker. I'm going to see if I can find something that I want. I don't want another Vines, I do want the Spell Pierce. Really hoping that they play another, um, another Fable of the Mirror Breaker here, so I can just counter that one. And look what happens. Boom, Fable. Nice. Breeding Pool, Spell Pierce. I don't know how I can put this... Have you have you watched these games? How important Preordain has been in every single one of them when I had it? I could I wish I could play 8 Preordains, because I would. Okay, so I'm just going to Vines, put them to 9, and I have 3 Infect creatures, so I can't see how I can lose, and we win. Okay, 4-1, and if you saw that game number 4, or round number 4... It was, it was clear that our deck was just insanely powerful, and I think pretty much everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong in the, 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 um, the fourth round. And I, I didn't even see my chokes. If I had choke at any given point, it would have just been an annihilation. If you are an Infect lover, give this list a try. Proxy it if you want to. It's really powerful. Force Negation, excellent. The combination of subtlety is just nuts. Um, as I said before, feels like a legacy deck, I think. Preordain has given this deck a huge uplift. Give it a try. All right. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can always ask them. And I will see you for the next video. Cheers.